My fellow Apple geeks of planet Earth, how the heck are you? This is the video I've been waiting to make since last October when we saw the iPad mini, you know, the first generation iPad mini announced by Apple. At least I believe it was in October, I'm pretty sure. All right, but before we get to the better half of the video, let me talk about the original iPad because this iPad did receive a substantial update, actually bigger than I expected. So this iPad right here is my iPad third generation, which has been obsolete for at least a year now, because as you know, the iPad fourth generation came out last year along the iPad mini first generation, mainly because Apple just wanted an excuse, in my opinion, to kill the 30 pin connector and put in the lightning port. And of course, bump up specs here and there, but that's just how I look at it. But today, Apple blew everyone's mind and completely killed the iPad name as we know it and introduced something called the iPad Air. Now yes, I gotta say, I did not see this coming whatsoever. iPad Air. Now I'm definitely gonna have to get used to the name. I mean, it is just the name and we'll get used to it. I mean, just like years ago, I wasn't a big fan of the name Mac Pro coming from something cool like the Power Mac G5. But nowadays the Mac Pro, it sounds perfect. So the iPad Air, is just like the MacBook Air. It's just something we'll have to get used to. And if anything, it's smart of Apple to do this because I feel like they're trying to relate to the MacBook Air and trying to have that branding, um, you know, the image of their branding remain consistent. At least to some degree, I'll rant about that towards the end of this portion of the video because Apple made a interesting decision to keep something on the market, let me just say that. Okay, so anyway, the iPad Air is exactly what it sounds like. It's a thinner iPad, actually up to 20% thinner, 20% thinner. That's a pretty significant difference in overall body form or form factor. Body form sounds kind of odd when talking about a device. It weighs just one pound now, down from 1.4 pounds. It has a 43% smaller bezel. That alone is pretty cool because this bezel, it's under my Zugu case right here, but it's pretty thick which honestly has never really been a concern of mine. I mean, I like the thick bezel, but it's not really a problem either way. So I'm glad that Apple did cut it down by 43%. And now just like the iPhone 5S, the iPad Air does have the A7 chip as well as the M7 chip. So yes, this means the processor is two times faster than the previous generation iPad. And you gotta keep in mind, and a 20% thinner form factor. I mean, the fact that the form factor is 20% thinner, but you're also getting twice the performance, that's pretty cool. You're also getting a five megapixel iSight camera as expected with 1080p HD video, a new FaceTime HD camera with larger pixels, that's always good, improved backside illumination, as well as dual microphones, which is something you've come to expect on the iPhone. Now it's on the iPad. That's good. Now it does start at $499, so it's good to see that Apple did not raise the price whatsoever. And the iPad Air is officially replacing the last generation iPad, also known as the iPad fourth generation. But this is what's odd. The iPad 2, yes, the iPad 2, a device that came out years ago, is still available for $399. Apple, what the freaking hell? Why are you keeping the iPad 2 on the market? It just drives me crazy that they're breaking up that consistency. One, because it doesn't have a retina display. And two, it uses a 30 pin connector. Why? Just kill it. Replace it with the iPad 3rd generation, which already has a beautiful retina display. Well, it does have the 30 pin, you know what? Scratch that. Just replace it with the iPad 4th generation. I mean, I doubt they're losing cost that much. But then again, I don't work for Apple, so obviously I don't have the opportunity of sitting in on these meetings, so we don't truly know the actual reason of why the iPad 2 is still around, especially now that the iPad mini 2nd generation is the same price. But I'll talk about that in a minute. I just want to get that rant out of the way. I mean, I love Apple as a company. I love their brand. I love their culture, I love their passion, but I just find it odd that the iPad 2 is still sitting here in the days of retina display, lightning port, and everything else that is good in the world. And yes, as you can hear, my voice is still not completely back. 
Okay, let's get on to the second portion of the video. Seriously, I was jumping for joy. I was like, oh my god. Yes, the iPad mini has retina display. Finally. Let's do a happy dance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's not do a happy dance. That was kind of embarrassing. But seriously, guys, I don't care if I embarrass myself. This is the announcement I've been waiting for for such a long freaking time. I love my iPad. I mean, I really do, but it's too big. I mean, have you ever dropped this thing when you're face in bed? It's not fun. Apple, you finally come through for me, so thank you. So yes, the new iPad mini with Retina Display does have an impressive resolution of 2048 by 1536 resolution. It has a four times faster CPU than the previous iPad mini and eight times faster graphics. Guys, eight times faster graphics. What? Okay, so it is available in silver, white, and black. Not gold. Did I call that or not? I mean, I said on Twitter, or at least I think I did. Well, now I'm telling you guys. I never expected a gold iPad. And I never expected Touch ID in the iPad. People doubted me saying, David, no, it should have Touch ID. But I said, no, I don't see them rolling out Touch ID in the iPads until this time next year. So there you have it. No Touch ID. No gold, and honestly, that's fine by me. All right, so interestingly enough, Apple did not talk about battery life as far as I'm concerned. Now, I did not watch the keynote live. I will be watching it tonight because I like to kick back in my living room and enjoy my coffee while watching the keynote without having to worry about taking notes, such as these, for videos such as this. So, excuse me if I did miss this bit of information, but I don't believe Apple talked about battery life. So this could only mean one thing, the iPad mini with retina display could have somewhat poor battery life. So that's something we'll have to wait and see. But honestly, that's fine by me. It's whatever. I mean, I charge my iPhone every night as it is. And I charge my iPad once a week or once every two weeks. And I don't use my iPad heavily. I mean, I really don't. I don't use my iPad nearly as much as my iPhone. My iPad is more of a couch device or a kind of an in-bed device. Or when I go over a friend's house, I bring my iPad. That way I can just chill while we do other things, you know? But then again, we all have different usages, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Now let's talk about the most disappointing part of the iPad mini. And that's the fact that it is being bumped up in price from $329 to $399. So yeah, I mean, a $70 price increase isn't going to kill you. I mean, it's not going to kill me. I know that. I mean, I'll still be buying it no matter what. But regardless, that is a nice little bump in price for those looking to not spend that much. But come on, is that going to stop me from buying a device that I've been holding out for a while now? Hell freaking no. And actually, when I sell my iPad third generation on eBay, I'm going to get most of my money back and literally spend zero dollars on the iPad mini. So in a way, the iPad mini second generation with Reddit display is kind of free in my eyes. And finally, the iPad mini with retina display will be available in late November, which is definitely later than I expected, actually later than everyone expected, I think. But you know what? That's only a month away. So I will be getting the Xbox One and the iPad mini with retina display within days of each other. And that right there is awesome. It goes without saying, but November is going to be nerdgasm worthy left and right. Raise up those shields because I ain't gonna be squirting pixels more than you could ever imagine. Oh and yes of course there are new cases and covers available for both the iPad and iPad mini. Check them out. And now last but not least we cannot forget about the first generation iPad mini. Now this is great news for those looking to save money and to get the iPad mini finally without breaking the bank or breaking the wallet. I guess I could go both ways but why would you break a bank? That's kind of illegal. Seriously though, the first generation iPad mini did get a nice price reduction from $329 to $299. So yeah, I mean, if you want an iPad mini, you can now save $30. Now in my eyes, there's nothing wrong with that. So Apple, bravo for keeping that on the market. And now guys, that is a wrap regarding my thoughts on the brand new iPad Air, gotta get used to that name, as well as the brand new iPad mini with Retina display. However, the fun does not stop there. If you are interested in hearing my thoughts regarding the brand new MacBook Pro, the brand new Mac Pro, and anything else regarding OS X Mavericks, check out my video link right below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. 
Let me know what you think regarding Apple's announcement today. And I mean, I'm really interested in getting a discussion going. I mean, I think personally, this has been one of Apple's biggest keynotes in a long time. And I'm excited as hell to get my hands on both the iPad mini, my own personal iPad mini, as well as the iPad Air in stores. So again, let me know what you think right below and I'll see you in tomorrow's video, which is hopefully my Loot Crate unboxing. We'll see. Peace.